Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my channel. Today and in upcoming few videos, we will talk about carbohydrates, their types, their properties and we will try to draw all types of carbohydrates on the board. These topics come under the chapter Biomolecules or Biochemistry which I have already started and uploaded two videos that is Basics of Biochemistry and Chemical Bonds in Biochemistry. The topics which are given in class 11 books or are useful for class 11, 12 and need students are covered. Then the topics which will be more helpful for BSc and MSc students is given on your screen. So I will cover all of this under the chapter Biochemistry. Carbohydrates are organic molecules. They are also called as biomolecules. Organic molecules are those which have carbon as the major portion in their structure as well as they have hydrogen and oxygen in them. That is, these three atoms must be necessarily present in one molecule or compound to be called as organic molecule or compound. And along with these three, other atoms may also be present, which is nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur. They may also be present. But these three must be present in a compound to be called as organic compound or organic molecule. I also define organic molecules as something which had life or has life. That is, furniture in your room is organic because it had life at some point of time. Then a leaf attached with a uh, tree is also organic because it is having life. So, the things which have CH and O are organic. All organic molecules are biomolecules, which means biomolecules are those which are synthesized in a living system and are required for the sustenance of life. So everything which is synthesized inside a cell can be called as biomolecule. And biomolecules are always organic molecules. And there are various examples of biomolecules which I have already discussed. That is carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, uh, amino acids, etc. Carbohydrates are defined as polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones. That is, they have the first thing they have CH and O. The second thing, they have either aldehyde or ketone. That is, one of them is present always in one carbohydrate. The third thing is, they are polyhydroxy. That is, they have many hydroxyl groups. Let's see one example, glucose. The formula is C6H12O6. The first criteria is met. That is, it is having CH and O. So, it is organic. It is synthesized in a cell, in a living cell. So, it is biomolecule. The second thing is, it is having aldehyde as the functional group. That is, RCHO is present in its structure. So, the second criteria is met, which uh, tells us that this is one carbohydrate. The third thing is, it is having many OH. This is one example of carbohydrate. That is, this is structure of glucose. See, it is having many CH and O. CHO, CHO. Then it is having one functional group, which is, I have drawn over here, aldehyde. Then it is polyhydroxy. See, OH, 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 OH. So, this is a carbohydrate and all the carbohydrates have these points in the definitions. Biomolecules are of two types, biomacromolecules and biomicromolecules. Biomacromolecules are the big molecules, the complex molecules which are required for the sustenance of life. These are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. We will cover carbohydrates first. Then biomicromolecules are nucleotides, amino acids, etc. These are the small molecules which are also required for the sustenance of life and these when come together they give rise to these complex molecules that is nucleotides from nucleic acids and amino acids from proteins. Carbohydrates are mainly found in sweet food items like fruits etc. These are the four basic forms of carbohydrates or types of carbohydrates that is monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. The meaning of the word saccharide is sugar and monosaccharides, disaccharides and oligosaccharides can be also called as sugars. But polysaccharide is the biggest type or the most complex type of carbohydrate. Monosaccharides are the simplest type. Let's suppose this is one monosaccharide. Let's suppose this is a brick and brick is the simplest part of a room. If two such bricks come together and a bond is formed in between them, then that molecule will be called as disaccharide. So monosaccharide, mono means one, saccharide means sugar. So it is type of carbohydrate which is having only one unit in it. 
the example is glucose fructose etc we will discuss and monosaccharides they cannot be simplified we cannot simplify this brick into smaller parts and when two such bricks come together then that molecule will be called as disaccharide di means two saccharide means sugar so disaccharides are made up of two monosaccharides let's suppose two glucose molecules have come together so a disaccharide will be formed two one glucose and one fructose has come together then also a disaccharide will be formed the examples are sucrose maltose lactose etc we will discuss then oligosaccharides are made up of 2 to 10 molecules of monosaccharides let's suppose seven monosaccharides have come together it is not necessary that all those seven will be of same type they may be of different types that is let's suppose i have uh, bonded over here seven types of dusters but of different colors that will be called as oligosaccharide or they can be of same color also so oligosaccharides are made up of 2 to 10 monosaccharides the example is raffinose maltotriose the polysaccharides are made up of many monosaccharide units that is they are made up of more than 10 monosaccharide units the example is cellulose glycogen chitin etc whatever may be the type of carbohydrate that is mono di oligo or poly the three things will always be present ch and o aldehyde or ketone and polyhydroxy one more thing all the types of carbohydrates have one general molecular formula which is cn h2o the whole n i will explain this then all the sugars have one surname one common surname which is os that is glucose type of monosaccharide which is a sugar having one surname os and sucrose a disaccharide a sugar having os in its name then raffinose a type of oligosaccharide which is also a sugar is having os in its surname monosaccharides can be divided into subtypes on the basis of three things number of carbon atoms type of functional group that is aldehyde or ketone and whether that particular monosaccharide is found in open chain form or cyclic structure i will explain all these things on the basis of number of carbon atoms these are the types of monosaccharides that is if three carbon atoms are present then that monosaccharide will be called as triose triose see tri means three and os means sugar and all these three all these things are monosaccharides that means they cannot be divided into further simpler things so a uh, three carbon atom monosaccharide will be called as a triose and on the basis of functional group a triose can be of two type either it can be a aldotriose with aldehyde functional group or a ketotriose with ketone functional group an example of aldotriose is glycerose an example of ketotriose is dihydroxyacetone we will draw the structures of all these the formula c cnh2o the whole which i have told n is equal to number of carbon atoms so number of carbon atom is 3 so i will write c3 then h2 the whole h2o the whole n matlab h2o the whole 3 so h will be 6 and o will be 3 so this is the formula of a glycerose and a dihydroxyacetone then if the number of carbon atoms is 4 then if the monosaccharide is having four carbon atoms then it is called as a tetrose the tetrose is aldotetrose if aldehyde is the functional group and ketotetrose if it is have it is having ketone as functional group the example of aldotetrose is erythrose and example of ketotetrose is erythrolose the formula is c4h8o4 then if five carbon atoms are present then the monosaccharide is called as pentose if it is having aldehyde group then it is called as aldopentose it is having ketone group then it is called as ketopentose the example of aldopentose is ribose and example of ketopentose is ribulose these two categories of monosaccharides are very important for your present topic and the example of uh, and the molecular formula of ribose and ribulose is c5h10o5 then if six carbon atoms are present then that monosaccharide will be called as hexose it is of two types aldohexose and ketohexose the example of aldohexose is glucose and the example of ketohexose is fructose and the molecular formula as you all know is C6H12O6. Then if the number of carbon atoms is 7 in a monosaccharide then that monosaccharide will be called as heptose which will be of two types aldoheptose and ketoheptose. The example of aldoheptose is glucoheptose and ketoheptose is cedoheptose and the formula is 
C7H14O7. Now, the open chain versus cyclic structure, this is given on your screen. So, a monosaccharide or a carbohydrate can be present in an open chain form or a cyclic structure, but cyclic structures are more stable. We will see the difference as well as how to draw them in our upcoming videos. Now, let's learn how to draw the structures of different types of monosaccharides. We will learn how to draw a triose, tetrose, pentose and hexose as these four are more important. Let's begin with triose. A triose means three carbon. So, first I will draw the three carbon atoms. Then, it will either have an aldehyde or a ketone group as functional group. And in carbohydrates, the functional group is given the lowest number of carbon atom. And the carbon is numbered from the upper part. So, over here, if it is an aldotriose, that is it is having one aldehyde group. So, aldehyde carbon will be numbered as number one carbon. And if, if, if it will have a ketone group, then obviously it will be numbered as number two carbon because a ketone means RC double bond of R. This R means this group and this R means this group. And RC double bond OH means this group is R. This group is double bond O and this is H. So, first draw the carbon skeleton. So, CCC. The next thing is you will draw two types of triose. So, one aldehyde group you will draw as carbon number 1 and ketone group as carbon number 2. Now, let's fill up the valency of carbon. As you all know, carbon has four types of atoms. So, over here the carbon number 1 is having double bond over here 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this carbon has satisfied its valency. The second carbon would have one hydrogen to fulfill the formula, whereas the third carbon would have two hydrogen. As it is attached with one carbon over here, with one OH over here, so there are two bonds can be formed. So, two bonds would be formed with hydrogen. This is our ketone carbon. This carbon would have one OH, obvious, because this is a polyhydroxy molecule. The other two bonds would be fulfilled by H. So, this carbon will also have 1 OH and 2 H. This is one our keto tetros and this is aldo tetros. This is the ketone group. This carbon will have 2 OH and 1 OH. This carbon would have 1 H, 1 OH. This will also have 2 H as two bonds are unfulfilled. As this is our aldo tetros, this is the aldehyde group. This carbon would have 1 H, 1 OH. This one also would have 1 H, 1 OH. But this would have 2 H as two bonds are unsatisfied. Now let's apply the molecular formula and verify it with the structure. As this is a triose molecule, so the formula would be C3H2 into 6 O3, C3H6 O3. C, three carbon atoms, three carbon atoms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 hydrogen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 hydrogen. Oxygen, 1, 2, 3. Here also, 1, 2, 3. So, the formula would be same for a triose molecule whether aldehyde is present or a ketone group is present. Similarly, over here also, these both molecules would have C4H8O4. The second, now let's draw one pentose and one hexose. Let's convert this triose into a pentose. In triose, you will draw three carbon in a chain. For a pentose, you will draw five carbon. So, let me rub this H and let me add two more carbon. So, one, two, three, four, five. The five carbons I have already drawn. And this is having one aldehyde group, so it is over. And these three carbon have fulfilled their valency. Let's fulfill the valency of these two carbon. So I will write OH, OH, H, H and H. This is a ribose. Similarly, this can be converted into a ribulose. I will add two more carbon and I will fulfill the valency. This C, H, C double bond or H can be written as CHO. So in here, Instead of this, I can simply write CHO to save time. And over here, instead of writing all these things, simply I can write CH2OH. These are the two types of hexose having six carbon atoms, as you see. This is having uh, aldehyde and this is having one ketone group. In hexose, this is one rule or there is one formula I don't know. If you all know the answer, you can comment me in the comment section. It is always seen that in third carbon, OH is on the left side and H is on the right side. This is the correct formula. I don't know why. If you know, you can tell me. So, over here, there are six carbon atoms and all the carbon atoms have fulfilled their balance. And here, one H I will write. So, this is one glucose and this is fructose. As it is having six carbon atoms with 
one ketone group and over here also the third carbon is having OH on the left side and H on the right. The structures which we have drawn till now are open chain structures. They can be also found in cyclic structures. We will see how to convert one open chain monosaccharide into a cyclic monosaccharide. What is the difference in between them? And in next week lecture, we will talk about the properties of monosaccharides. In the third lecture, we will see open chain and cyclic structure. With this, we come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.